ready to uh, have our uh, Bible study for today. Uh, we're going to first of all come to you with our opening passage of scripture coming out of the 51st Psalm verses 1 through 13. Then we're going to have our invocation and then we'll go right into the word for today. Beginning at verse 1 of Psalm 51, and the language of the King James Version sounds like this. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Amen. The word of God is for the people of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for allowing us this opportunity to see another day which we've never seen before. We ask that you will continue to bless and keep those of us that have logged in to share today with this study. Be with those who have the desire to be with us and cannot. Continue to keep us all. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen. All right. I want to get ready as we uh, begin to pick back up our study of Ephesians, building a community uh, in Christ. We're at session six now. And session six deals with, or topic, is our personal responsibility. Our personal responsibility. And now we're going to be coming out of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 uh, through 13 today. Now, before we go any further, we want to kind of bring us up to speed on a few things. Now, the messages that the Holy Spirit gave Paul to give to the church at Ephesus and now to us uh, in our studies that we've had up to now were these. First of all, in session two, we had a life, a life of spiritual blessing. And that came out of Ephesians chapter one, verses one through 14. Then in our third session, we dealt with the topic of a life of prayer, which came out of Ephesians chapter one, verses 15 through 23. But then in session four, we dealt with the topic of don't forget where you come from, coming out of Ephesians chapter two, verses one through 10. And then in the last session that we had before this one, session five, we had becoming one despite our differences. And that's coming out, or that came out of rather Ephesians chapter two, verses 11 through 22. Now, as we continue to learn the importance of building a community in Christ, we now look at session six, which is our personal responsibility. Again, our personal responsibility coming out of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. Now, it's important for us to realize, brothers and sisters, that God is the same yesterday, today, uh, and forever. That passage of Hebrews says the same thing about Jesus. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You see, God continues to call us as believers. First of all, he calls us to himself by way of salvation opportunity through Jesus. But then God calls us to his purpose, also known as his plan for our lives. Now, it's important for us to understand that what God reveals, or rather, when God reveals his plan or purpose for our lives, he expects us to respond to his plan. He doesn't expect us to run from his plan. Because sometimes we find ourselves running from the plan of God instead of responding to the plan of God. So now let's take a look at some of the first passages here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. And we're going to use today the New American Standard Bible version. Uh, if you have your King James, that's fine. If you have your NIV, that's fine. I, I really like the, when I'm doing studies, as I've shared with you on other occasions, the New American uh, Standard uh, Study Bible, because I like that 
translation is closer to the original text, whether it is in Hebrew of the Old Testament or the Greek of the New Testament. But let's take a look. Beginning at verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ, Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the administration of God's grace, which was given to me for you, that by revelation there was made known to me the mystery as I wrote before briefly. Now, interestingly enough, it becomes important for us to understand that as, as Paul begins this third chapter, he says, for this reason. And in some versions he says, because of this. Uh, which is basically implying that <clears throat> everything that I've said in the first couple chapters has been based on what I'm getting ready to tell you now. And so uh, Paul pretty much shares who he is. And this is going to be interesting, especially when we talk about uh, this lesson in, in, in knowing who we are and taking on our personal responsibility as we are to as, uh, as saints of God. Uh, it becomes important for us to really recognize or know who it is that we are as a Christian. Paul knows who he is. He makes perfectly clear uh, that reality to the Ephesians uh, as well as to us when we read it now. And so a question to ask yourself is, first of all, do you know who you are as a Christian? That's one question. Uh, uh, do people know who you are as a Christian? Therein lies another question I want you to think about. And if they do, what do they know about you as a Christian? Do they know that you attend church? Do they know that you read the Bible? Do they know that you try to live a godly lifestyle? Do they know that you know the Word? Uh, do they know that you are learning more about the Word of God? Do, you, do they know that you have a responsibility to witness about Jesus and testify about the good and the greatness of Jesus? And another question I want you to think about is this one. What have people heard about you? What are they saying? When they talk about you or when they discuss you or when they think about you uh, as the person that you are, as the Christian that you are, uh, what have they heard about you? It becomes important. Paul makes it perfectly clear when he opens up this passage of scripture, he says, if you've heard what was given to me, you've heard about me, okay? I want you to know that everything that I've been telling you up to this point has been leading me to let you know uh, what it is that you need to do personally yourself. Just as what Paul does personally, we need to do personally ourselves, which is one of the reasons why uh, this particular segment uh, is talking about our personal responsibility. Because if we're going to build a community in Christ, not only is it important that we understand the Word of God, but it's important that we understand our responsibility to share that Word. It's not just important for us to know that Jesus lives, that He died for our sins, that He rose on the morning of the third day, which was the third day of the week, but it's also important for us to be able to take it upon ourselves to share that with those that we know as well as those that we don't know. So now, let's take a look at the next couple of passages. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. By referring to this, when you read, you can understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which in other generations was not made known to mankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets in the Spirit. Verse 6. To be specific, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel of which I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me according to the working of his power. Now listen, as Paul explains to the people who remember now who are not like him, and what I mean by that, I mean that they're Gentiles, they're non-Jews, okay? But when he explains to them how God has made known to him that salvation is now available for everyone, Salvation is available for all, regardless of the race, regardless of the culture, regardless of their creed. And not only that, he makes it perfectly clear that he was one of the first to learn of this truth and understand it. And not only that, it is his personal responsibility. There we go. It was his personal responsibility to make it known to everyone. 
It's not enough just to know it. Now that you know it, you have a personal responsibility to share it. That becomes very, very important uh, as it relates to who we are in building a community in Christ Jesus. Paul gives us a great example of this just in his words, without even actually doing anything, just talking about the importance of what it is that God has blessed him to know. And not only him, he says, and even other apostles, but not only that, but now he, as well as they, have a responsibility to share with everyone. And his specific responsibility is sharing it to people who are not like him. And so he has that personal responsibility to reach out to the Gentiles or the non-Jew at this particular point in time. And so it becomes important for us to realize, brothers and sisters, as we learn, and we'll get to this a little bit more a little later today, but as we learn, as we know more uh, about Christ Jesus and in the pardon of our sins and the word of God and the way of God and the will of God, it becomes important for us to not just keep it to ourselves, but to be able to share it with those that we, here we go, do not know. Not just those that we know, but those that we do not know. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a responsibility that we have to do that. But now, let's take a look at some other things here. Now, <clears throat> based on what we share with you in verses 4, 5, 6, and 7, the question that I want you to think about is this. What is your responsibility to witness? Or maybe I should ask another question. Did you know that you had a responsibility to witness? The answer to that is yes. Now, now, do, do, do you, do you uh, engage that responsibility to witness uh, to your spouse or to your mate or to your children or to your families or to your friends? Sometimes that could be the easy one. Those could be the easy ones, as difficult as those may be, because sometimes the folk that we know could be more difficult to witness to and to testify to uh, than strangers. But nevertheless, uh, they're the first, that's the first line. But it doesn't end there, because you see, it's important for us to understand that we have a responsibility to witness to those who are not like us. Amen. It becomes important for us to understand that our witness, our testimony, our sharing, our building of a community in Christ goes beyond just those that we know. Okay? Goes beyond those that just look like us. <coughs> you know, goes beyond uh, those who are of the same culture as us. It becomes important for us to understand that reality. Whether it is racial differences, gender differences, nationality, nationality differences, or culture differences. Brothers and sisters, we have a personal responsibility. If we're going to build a community in Christ Jesus, we can't change the world if we don't reach out to everyone in the world and do our best to reach out everything into it. God did not promise us success. He told us to be faithful. And if we are faithful, he will grant us success. Because sometimes we hinder ourselves and say, well, I'm not going to go out and reach out. I'm not going to go out and witness. I'm not going to go out and use my testimony because these folk don't want to hear it. These folk don't want to respond to it. That's not your issue. That's not your responsibility. Your personal responsibility is to share it. Amen. Now, it's important for us to understand that God did not place within you this hunger that you have that this desire that you have to worship God, this hunger and desire that you have to serve God, this hunger and desire that you have to learn God. He didn't give you all of that so that you could keep it to yourself or keep it among yourselves or even keep it amongst the folk that, again, look like you, look like us. It's important for us to understand that we have a personal responsibility to build a community that consists of all that are willing to hear and respond to the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, true enough, Everyone's not going to respond positively. Everyone's not going to want to hear it. But again, that's not our issue. <coughs> we do not not do that because the possibility of folk not wanting to hear or respond in kind is what we're going to get. We have a personal responsibility, brothers and sisters, if we're going to build a community in Christ, if we're going to change the world, if we want the world to change, if we want to be a part of it, as they used to say when I was coming up, if you want to be a change agent, if we're going to be a change agent, uh, to make the world a better place, we must be willing to take on the personal responsibility. So now, we take a look at the last part of our passages for today, which is a long one, verses 8 through 13 of chapter 3. I'll read it for you. To me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given 
to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to enlighten all people as to what the plan of the mystery is which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things so that the multifaceted wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Verse 11, this was in accordance with the eternal purpose which he carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. Verse 13, therefore I ask you not to become discouraged about my tribulations in your behalf, since they are your glory. Now listen, as we have a, this personal responsibility based on God's grace, God's mercy, our growth, or our calling as a maturing, learning, or even a preaching Christian, it's important for us to understand that with all of that, that doesn't make us better than anyone else. Paul would say here to the church at Ephesus, he says, he says, me, I'm the very least of all. Even though God has given me this good stuff, God has given me this hunger to learn and to receive the word, God has given you this hunger to learn the word of God, to worship God, to do service unto others. He's put this in you for a reason. And even as he has done that in you, and as good as you may be at it, whether it's preaching, teaching, sharing, serving, whatever it is, it's important to understand that still doesn't make you better than anyone else. It's important for us to understand that Paul made it perfectly clear. With all of the blessing and information that God has given him, he still considers himself the very least of all saints. So now, it's important for us to understand that God prepares us for and with purpose. God prepares us for purpose. God prepares us with purpose. Now, there may be times when the expression of God's purpose in our lives will be met with resistance by others toward us, but, but that's, that's life. That's a part of it. Now, that's, that's Satan's job. But it becomes important for us to understand that as God prepares us for purpose, and as God prepares us with purpose, that regardless of whatever resistance that we engage, we must continue to press on, press on and do God's will. Because remember, together what we're doing is engaging our personal responsibility and working to build a community in Christ Jesus. Now, it's important to understand that even as Paul said all of these words, remember now, he was in a Roman prison when he was writing all these words of encouragement, words of strength. You know, he could have been turning inward and looking at his own situation, which was not looking good, by the way, uh, but nevertheless, in the midst of that, he still felt the personal responsibility to help those. And I call on you today, as we look at these words, as we talk about, as we go through Ephesians, building a community in Christ Jesus, it becomes important for us to recognize and realize that we must have a personal responsibility. So remember that. And so we want to thank you for sharing with us on today. Uh, we hope we've been a blessing and a help to you on today. Uh, we look forward to sharing with you. I uh, want you to know that our Sunday school lesson uh, that we generally do on Saturdays, that we're going to do uh, this week, we're going to do it on Friday. We're going to do it at 10 o'clock on Friday uh, this week. This week only, God said the same. Uh, we're not going to do it on Saturday at 10. We're going to do it on Friday at 10. We're going to do the church school lesson to prepare ourselves uh, for the coming Sunday with what I like to call the Sunday school preview review of the lesson. So we will just want you to be mindful of that. Also, as we are in the midst of this week, we want you to know that we do have sacrament here at the church. Uh, if there are any of you that want to send some family member by or come by to pick it up, uh, we're here at the church and we'll provide that for you uh, as we prepare for another communion Sunday, another what I like to call a pandemic influence communion Sunday. But brothers and sisters, we are firm in our resolve that we're not going to let nothing separate us uh, from our obedience to Christ Jesus as nothing separates God's love for us from him. So let us continue to be there. And we want you to know that when we commune on Sunday, uh, as we share with you all the time, that if you do not get the communion from us here at the church, that if you have uh, some juice and if you have some bread, that you can share with us as we share in communion following the worship on Sunday. Uh, and if you're not able to do that, understand God knows that we're in the midst of this pandemic. And he knows what we're up against. And he knows that we're doing the best that we possibly can to do what we can. 
So may God continue to bless you and may he keep you. Thank you, Sister Jones, for sharing with us as the camera person on the day. Say hello to everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. And so you all take care, and I'm glad that you all were able to take a look at us at a different time for the day. Uh, God say the same. We'll be back on with our regular times uh, on next week. But until then, take care, and God bless.